How's it going, people? It is Liam Caddison here. We're on the final episode of Peacemaker, which has been a very phenomenal series and one that I have cherished so much. Um, it's been really good to see Chris's character grow, even though he can still be a dick. Um, there have been emotional layers to his story, uh, like the last episode provided, and... Um, not just that, though, but the whole butterfly storyline has been very, very, not just creepy, but very, very well executed. And I'm excited to see how things pan out as we have a big cow to deal with. Obviously, that's the main target if we're going to stop the butterflies, because, of course, they're worldwide. So, yeah, this cow will put a stop to them. So, yeah, but I'm also excited to see where other characters' stories go, especially with Leota Vigilante, who's my favourite, because he's just a blessing. He's just a gift. So, yeah. Um, and I'm kind of expecting Judo Master to be intertwined into things, um, especially with how badass he is. Um, I think he could be very, very fundamental in terms of the whole... Um, battle against the butterflies but uh yeah like i said it's been a fantastic series james gunn has done very um well with this show it's been very very enjoyable uh not just that though but the cast as well they've been excellent and uh i'm excited to see how things conclude so with that said let's get into the final episode of peacemaker this is episode eight let's go i can't apologize enough <laughs> I know that you're mad, but from the bottom of my heart. This is like that family guy skit. Back. I really am sorry. I'm just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put a walkie in it and activate it from here. And then maybe you can put on activate anti gravity and just float it over there. Uh, guys. Ah! Once in the jungles of Cambodia. Guys. Fuck! Deactivate anti-gravity! Deactivate anti-gravity! Fuck. Well, that's as compromised. You say, activate anti-gravity. No. Like Green Arrow? No, not like Green Arrow. That dude goes to brony conventions dressed in the back half of Twilight Sparkle with a four-inch wide butthole drilled in the costume. <laughs> you actually believe that shit? It's a Green Arrow DC you confirmed. Superhero. No, I actually heard that's true about Green Arrow, but that's the first thing he said that's real. An Aquaman fucking fish. Well, yeah. <laughs> Look, it doesn't even... Wait for something to happen. Go to the barn. Go to the barn. Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> there are shitloads of ants. How many fish are there? I don't Shit know, loads. probably as many as there are ants. <laughs> Not in one place at the same time, dude. Okay, I'm as confused as fuck by this conversation. Yeah? <laughs> Please. Welcome to the no, fucking my God. club. No, vigilante's oh, me in a nutshell. Uh, oh. How do you like that, huh? Thanks for coming back, ghost. So I can kill you all over again. You know what? As Cog says, piss off, ghost. Smith, what are you doing? Oh, I can't do this. You got this, John. I you can't do this. You Smith, shot. We're already inside. You're doing. You shot crazy. a racist. You chainsaw a gorilla. You can What's do there? this, John. <coughs> we believe in you. Uh, stairs. Oh, he sees the cow and he's like, fuck. Oh, no. Holy fuck! The man you've taken over. Why did he do that to his beard? Oh, my God! Why did he color his beard as strange <laughs> like that? Damn, this makes his situation though, sad. He never thought anybody noticed. Until recently. When one guy said it to him all the time. Fuck. Uh, 
Oh no 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 no! You can be a boss. Oh! No. This guy. What the fuck? Fuck. Activate sonic boom. <laughs> yes! I like this helmet! If something happens to us, you're the only hope. The fuck am I? <laughs> Let's go kill a cow. Oh, yes! Oh, I'm loving this. Go Harcourt! Do you want to taste this? Go kill the cow! We'll hold them off here! Oh, shit! So cool. Bitch, are you okay? Bitch! Oh my god, oh my god! He's been through the rigor as well! Oh my god! Because I'm made for this shit. God damn it, you're gonna get hurt! She's gonna. She's. She's. She's going for. Oh my god! Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> No, 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 no! Oh, here she is! Activate human torpedo! Yes! Yes! Oh, maybe not. <laughs> you tried. Oh, Jesus, I told her not to use that one. Listen to me. I have no ignoring science in favor of populist leaders who tell you that the floods and the fires and the disease are unrelated to your own actions. Valuing profit over survival. Oh my. Treating minor inconveniences as assaults on your freedom. And so we made a vow to do anything we could to change your future. They we needed to help. To make the choices for you that you were incapable of making on your own. To save your people and your world Shit. no matter how many lives it cost us. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you for feeding me and talking to me and showing me kindness. I see who you are and That's I see That's why it drew character. the peace sign. I join us in saving your planet. Oh. What do you say? Activate human torpedo. What? Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Not gonna be good for Leona, but this is the wrong way of going about peace. Sorry, Goff. <laughs> Holy shit! Yo! Holy shit! You're late, you fucking dickheads. <laughs> Fish, asshole. <laughs> I'm so fucking sick of that rumor. It's not a rumor. Well, maybe you just gave us a chance to make our own choices instead of our bug overlords. Mm, they wanted that power. Of course, they had a Why did you complex. choose not to help them? Because of your proto-fascist libertarian idea of freedom? Because I knew they'd hurt you and the others if I did. Don't tell V, but after Eagly, you're my BFF. Oh!
The Gelatis should be up there, though. Years out of Bell Reef Prison, under the command of a, of a woman named Amanda. Yo, Wall you are getting thrown <laughs> under the bus, Who lady. To be my mother. <laughs> oh. I love this ending. Oh, it's the last supper, isn't it? Goff ain't even mad. <laughs> I'm just gonna, like, just put my hand over him and just pretend it's... yeah. Oh, man. Ooh. Great finale. Superb stuff with everyone. A few close calls. But, you know, we won, we, we won at the end. Very, oh, pardon me, very, very interesting insight in regards to the butterflies and why they sought for power. Um, But it went, they went about it the wrong way and it, uh, there is, I guess, some kind of parallel in, in terms of Peacemaker and how he sought for peace as well, I guess. Um, obviously, they wanted to help uh, humanity out, but that takes a very, very, I guess, macabre way, uh, because they would be in control and they would be essentially killing humanity to save humanity. It's weird to say that, isn't it? But that's, that's, that's it. They're, taking the pilot seat of a sort, so... You're not fat at all. See? Why are you all so obsessed with my physical appearance? Wow, Sarcasm. bitch! I haven't noticed you eating way more corn chips than any one human being should eat, and I'm not worried that you're gonna die. But I, I am worried that you're gonna die. Thanks. <laughs> Bloody hell, vigilante. Bloody hell. Uh, I am glad that he survived, though. Because I would be distraught if Vigilante died. He is just... Yeah. He is just crazy. Um, yeah, what a great conclusion. There were some very interesting moments that came out. Especially with the Justice League. They were teasing it. And, uh, you know, I kind of had hope. In a sense. Because this is a global situation. But... It's a case of, could uh, would they do it? Would they not? I mean, we had Flash appearing in Suicide Squad for, like, a two-second scene. So, But I guess this is a bit more restrictive with it being, you know, TV. But still, I mean, anything could happen. Like, Ezra even appeared on Crisis on Infinite Earths. On the frickin' CW. So, yeah. There was a little bit of hope. So, Yeah. But it's interesting that A, Batman didn't show up, and B, Gal Gadot and Henry Carvel, although we can have a feeling about Henry Carvel because he's not going to be playing Superman anymore. They were shadowed out, I think. Yeah, is yeah. So they were not as clear as Jason or Ezra, so. No, but there were some interesting moments, especially with the uh, butterflies revealing, hey, we came here to help you guys out. So, what about it the wrong way? But, you know. No, it was a really, really... And, and I think everyone had their moments to shine in terms of the 11th Street kids. Um, everyone had their moments to shine and showed their valor in my opinion so yeah i really enjoyed season one of uh peacemaker um 
And I think that was a really, really great way to end things, especially given the butterfly, um, uh, the butterfly's objective. And it wasn't, you know, them just um, as alien invaders who just like to seep into people's mouths and um, take over them. Uh, they had, they had a reasoning, and uh, you had. You had um, Mern, who was, I guess, the rogue, but really what they did was um, the wrong way about it, of course, in terms of, uh, take, well, killing the person and uh, base. Well, it, it's funny you say killing the person because their thoughts and memories, etc., they still remain. But once the butterfly takes over, free will is completely gone and uh, they are puppeteering them. And once, um, it, like if they leave, then they essentially die. So yeah, I like, I get it though as well, because um, they had a similar scenario on their planet. They came to earth and they realized that humans were fucking up the planet. And um, they wanted to help out, make sure that, uh, humanity can continue to live and not fall into the same trap that they did and you know it really makes um sense because wasn't uh the senator senator goff uh i think it was wasn't he a climate change denier so look like looking at um what goff said in this episode and um just um, everything and um, not just that though but how it parallels to Peacemaker it, it's the same mission but we can see how much um, Peacemaker has changed because he realised this was wrong they killed as many people as they had to to achieve peace to achieve humanity to prosper but it was the wrong way of going about it so yeah it's the same scenario and yet it wasn't right. And, um, you know, even though Peacemaker said, I, I didn't want to see you guys die. Um, I feel like there is still a semblance of, um, Peacemaker realizing that, um, well, well it's, there's still a semblance of change for Peacemaker. And, um, I feel like, um, yeah, it is a very, very great way to kind of add layers and sympathy, I would say, for the for the butterflies, because they, um, whilst they are still antagonistic and whilst they paint Mern as, I guess, the villain, because uh, he was against this whole idea of looking out for the humans, I guess, uh, in their mindset. Uh, they were still doing uh, they they still went about it the wrong way. And uh, they had no problems killing innocent people. So, um, whereas they thought they were helping out the planet, they were also they they were also um, doing shitty things in terms of uh, the people of this planet in order to achieve peace, in order to to save the planet. So, it's very very interesting explanation, um, but also very very great to how it equalizes peacemaker's main objective and how in the end peacemaker just no he couldn't so yeah and there was also a bit of sympathy w as well with um with john as well when obviously he was pretending and we it, it's very very powerful to know why he dyed his beard and how Chris feels like shit now that he, like, every time he has made jokes about it, he's done it several times, maybe a dozen, uh, throughout the course of the show, and hearing about the, you can even see it on his face, he was, like, feeling so shitty in why, in, in regards to him taking the piss out of John, because, um... John, like you, you could even see John uh, tear up. I, I, I think um, there was moments where he, you know, could tear up, and uh, yeah, it was really, really, um, it was really, really sad. So I, uh, I'm really, really surprised they went that direction in terms of having a very, very layered and powerful story to John uh, and the reasoning why he dyed his beard. So, um. Yeah, so very, very powerful stuff.
And I gotta say, when they went shooting against the butterflies and uh, do you want to taste plate eight was really, really cool. I like the fact that when Harcourt was fighting for her life, the music started to distort. So you're expecting a complete badass scene. The music's playing. It's like, okay, the butterflies are screwed now. And it wasn't going the way you were expecting. Harcourt was down. Vigilante was down. Um, you had Peacemaker who was trapped. So, and um, then John injured himself. Leota was basically the only hope. So I was expecting Judo Master to show up, but he was too, he was fucking late, you assholes. <laughs> uh, you're at late, you fucking assholes. That's it. I still can't believe that just, like I still, well, Aquaman and Flash showed up. I mean, so did Superman and um, Wonder Woman. Batman was probably still suffering from the roasting of um, what Peacemaker said to the neighbor in regards to um, his coterie of supervillains. So, no, but um, that was really, really cool. And I love the fact that Aquaman is aware of the fucking the fish rumor. So, <laughs> that was so, so good. Um, yeah, I can, un I can understand why they shadowed out Superman because they're obviously going to try and reboot Superman and have another actor play him um, since Henry is sadly not coming back. Um, I'm not sure about Gal Gadot because I haven't heard anything about her. And where was Cyborg for that matter? Hmm. I mean, Batman I can understand because uh, Batfleck is getting written out and Michael Keaton is going to be the new Batman uh, the new DCEU Batman should I say um, so yeah but Cyborg I'm you know questioning of that one so yeah um, so yeah but I really really thought that was a nice little cameo to, to, to sneak in especially when they were teasing it um, as well as Green Arrow being DCEU. Need that to happen. I need the movie to happen. Um, no, but I really loved uh, Leota um, and Chris making amends because of, obviously there was a bit of a strain at the start and um, there was that forgiveness as well. Even to the point where Chris was questioning, was what I just did right or did I just fuck us all up? So... But like I said, the butterflies, um, they, whilst their ideals aligned with, with Chris's, they went about it in a very, very wrong way. They stripped away free will and they killed innocent people. They took over their minds and killed the person that, um, um, that they were. And yeah, so... But I really, really love uh, Leota calling out her mother as well. That there, there was a um, nice bit of closure for her character as well. Um, so, as well as the fact that she is, in human terms, Chris's BFF. Because, of course, she comes after eagerly. So, <laughs> yeah, but um, I really, really like the fact that uh, she exposed... Um, uh, the details about Project um, Butterfly and um, Aman uh, Amanda Waller. So, um, yeah, but she wasn't expecting that, was she? So, whee. but um, yeah, it was really, really good. I do want to speak about Vigilante for a second because um, after, I think, episode five sometime uh, in the weekend, I made the mention, um, actually, about the fact that, um, you know, I was reflecting on Vigilante and how amazing of a character he was. And, yeah, I, uh, over the course of these uh, uh, few episodes, there have been something creeping up on me, in, um, and which I'll explain in a moment, um, as, you know, episode by episode, um, over the course of six to eight um, went by, there was something that just rang to my mind. And I think this episode solidified something uh, based on certain exchanges. Um, this one was uh, the real realization for me. Um, but I made the mention about how, like I made a tweet saying how 
um, based on, you know, some of the dialogue that came out that, holy shit, Adrian from Peacemaker is me. Because there is that sense of awkwardness, etc. And um, yeah, but I feel like over the course of these last few episodes um, that I've recorded today, I feel like, I, like apart from the whole, you know, um, murder and whatnot and how um, that happens. And, you know, there might be a sense of, um, there might be a sense about how people might think it might be, um, I, I would say, harmful to associate uh, Vigilante to this. But I do feel like with some of the um, traits that he showed... I do feel like that Adrian might uh, Adrian might be on the autistic spectrum. So, like, obviously, for those who don't know, I am on the autistic spectrum. But there are certain things that do stand out, um, um, like the confusion of sarcasm, etc. And um, um, not just that, though, but when he was talking about the ants and the and the circle of life and how that compares to fishes, you had John who was confuddled. And, you know, sometimes I will come out with dialogue and I can confuddle people. And, um, you know, I try to be very, very confident in terms of dialogue. Uh, but sometimes there are stuff that comes out which does confuse people, um, which I can't help because... Um, my uh the way i uh the it it's so hard to imagine those who do not have autism and how they are able to speak so confidently and you know there's me who's who who churns out dialogue and i feel like um the way of uh conveying dialogue it can be a a bit different in the mind of um, someone like me to someone who's not on the spectrum so there was that confusion bit that um like okay that's another relatable thing um facial expressions as well that i know that can be sometimes a thing um on the spectrum that can be hard to decipher as well in terms of emotions um because we had in the last episode vigilante say yo uh, I, this is not the time to be practicing your face muscles and uh, john was like um he's crying so there is that um and I also feel like, um, especially with how he's been trying to preserve his uh, identity, etc., and then slowly as the Eleventh Street kids banded, um, there was that feeling of belonging, if that makes sense, that he no longer need. You could say no longer needed to to mask his identity, um, and um, not just that though, but. It's like as someone who has sometimes felt um, out of place amongst with people, there is that nice um, and reassuring feeling of belonging with a group of people. And I feel like Vigilante definitely f uh, fits in that um, aspect as well. So, um, yeah, like I said, I know that there might be, um, there might be, like, it can be, uh, I don't know, um, uh, and a, an up for debate opinion really in regards to if you wanted to associate him to the autistic spectrum but i do feel like there are certain traits that th uh, that do come out um like the jokes as well like um sometimes i i feel like um i um i don't know with the farting i feel like sometimes i don't know when to stop in terms of the jokes etc so yeah but um um i do feel like over the course uh, and especially over these last few episodes i have picked up on certain things that do that i can associate with and uh, that can be as uh, an effect of um, my autism because you know sometimes i do have um, sometimes i do miss the joke etc or miss certain bits of uh, of sarcasm and there are confusion to what i say etc um and yeah, there's there are a lot of um there are a lot of moments where I do have that um do have that connectivity if that makes sense. So it's just something that I was thinking over the course of these last few episodes in conjunction with how I was like, holy shit, Adrian is me. Um and then, you know, over the course of these last few episodes, I'm like, holy shit, Adrian is me, because of the fact that I'm picking up on certain traits that I can associate with. So yeah. Um, 
no, it's like I said, something that I that um I put some thought into, um, especially over the course of um this episode, last episode in particular, and um, something that I wanted to vocalize. Um, but like I said, it I feel like it's more so an up for debate opinion. So yeah, but that's just my two cents on the matter. So yeah, but uh. It was a really, really solid conclusion. I thought that uh, this was a nice conclusion to Chris's... Well, it was a nice con uh, conclusion to Chris's si uh, situation following the events of the Suicide Squad. Um, but there's also some um, um, residue of his story, of course, because he's still plagued uh, by the haunting of, of um, his father's memory, as we saw um, in two occasions on this episode. And... Um, you know, maybe if we get it, uh, into season two, um, that can be an ongoing thing. But um, yeah, I I do feel like how um the way that certain stories did conclude, like for Leota and um how there is that second chance for Harcourt, um, I did really like how certain things came about, and uh, I thought this was a really really incredible way of concluding um what has been a really incredible show i've really loved it it's been pretty great james gunn has done extraordinary um like he did with the suicide squad like he's done with guardians of the galaxy um he's made me feel emotional for things i did not expect to feel emotional towards but here we go uh and he's presented some really really uh, amazing opportunities with um certain characters including chris um, considering how the Suicide Squad ended, um, y there was that bit of controversy for his character. And I feel like his character has has grown. Yeah, he might still be a dickhead at certain points, but um, I feel like it's clear to say that his character has grown over the course of, of these episodes. And um, it's been a really, really enjoyable journey with some enjoyable characters and... Um, just the story in general has just been superb so yeah but uh, until then folks I will see you guys next time hope you guys enjoyed this reaction you can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content you can also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to hope you guys enjoyed this reaction hope you guys take care and I will see you guys next time toodles